What's up guys, I'm Ponte here, and in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about the next gen iPad, the iPad 9. So, unfortunately, it's not going to be what we thought it was going to be. A lot of people were tweeting this picture out, and unfortunately, it is not the case. We are going to get the iPad, but we are going to see it in its original form factor, which is this. And I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the things that we should expect with this new iPad. Let's begin. Okay, so I'm going to be telling you guys this based off an article from MacRumors.com. And I'll have that linked down in the description for you guys in case you guys want to check it out for yourselves. So this is gonna be a 10.5 inch iPad with the A13 Bionic chip, um, or actually it just says chip. I'm not sure if it's the Bionic or a regular chip. I don't know the difference anymore. <laughs> so it's gonna be coming in the spring of 2021 as the Chinese website CN Beta reports. It says here, the report spotted by iMore speculates that the 9th generation iPad will be similar to the current 8th generation iPad, but with a number of minor improvements. The 9th generation iPad is said to have a larger 10.5 inch LED display with an A13 Bionic chip. So it is Bionic chip a four gigabyte of RAM and thinner, lighter design. It will reportedly still have a home button with Touch ID and the lightning port. Okay, this is where I wanted to talk a little bit. Cool that they're still gonna have the same design with the home button and everything, but I would have loved to see it transfer to a newer design such as the iPad Air and iPad Pro did. So that's kind of a bummer. I do think it's a cool idea that they're doing it for those people who do not like the newer design. You know, every, you know, a lot of people don't like this newer design. They prefer the older design. So I'm glad that Apple is actually taking that into consideration and still keeping that design around. Props to you. The other thing that I didn't really like, and unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to see a change in it, is the lightning port. You know, we, on the iPad Pro and the MacBooks, we have the USB-C, but on most of the iPads, we still have lightning, which to me is really confusing and just plain dumb, if you ask me. But that's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. All right, so it says here that it would be possible to achieve a larger 10.5 inch display and thinner design by reusing the ch chassis or chassis, whatever. I don't know how to say that. And front panel of the third generation iPad Air. This seems highly plausible because Apple tends to trickle designs down its iPad lineup. For example, the design of the first generation iPad Air came from the fifth generation iPad. The design of the 10.5 inch iPad Pro came from the third generation iPad Air. And the design of the 11 inch iPad Pro came to the fourth generation iPad Air the new one that we just got. So it also says here that the third generation iPad Air is 0 0.07 pounds lighter and 1.4 millimeters thinner than the eighth generation iPad. It has a 10.5 inch display and retains the lightning port and home button. So it clearly meets the remit of what is expected from the ninth generation iPad. Reusing this design would also allow Apple to keep costs down for lower price point of the iPad. Room and specifications would also offer some 
clear upgrades over the current model while not cannibalizing the mid-range 4th generation iPad Air which has a 10.9 inch display, the, four, the A14 chip and Touch ID integrated into the power button and USB-C. However, it would be peculiar for Apple to update its entry-level iPad so soon, which is honestly true. I do, I do kind of agree that uh, it is kind of weird. So, I, I again, I really love how they're keeping you know, both sides of the consumer happy, but I do think that eventually it's going to change into a whole different perspective and it's going to have the iPad Pro design. I think that one of these days they're just going to completely drop the normal iPad look. Now, that goes saying, if people continue with the old iPad look, if people, if they see that the people buying this product continues over time, then they might think about doing it, which, you know, they are. So, I, again, I'm really happy to see that, but I just think that it's probably going to change sooner or later, in my opinion. I'm not sure. I'm not Apple. I wish I was, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not. But the really good thing about all of this is that Apple, while trying to give us some of the newer specs, they are keeping it at a very low price point, which is really good. And the price point that is said in the article uh, for this new iPad is only $299. So that, that's great. I, I mean, if Apple can pull it off to the point where you can keep these prices lower and lower with the entry-level iPads, awesome. You know, I think a lot more people would prefer those than buying the newer iPads. Now, again, like I said, I think that it would be a cool idea to have a new iPad look with some of the older specs. You know, I think a lot of people would appreciate that as well. While keeping this at a lower price point, they so can do so. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you guys are new. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comment section down below or join me on my social media. It's always at the end of the video. I'll see you guys in the very next video. Have a fun